In this video, we will learn how to set up a local repository on our HEL 8 and above versions. Our HEL Linux uses online repositories to store and manage our PM packages. When you install our HEL Linux, the installation process automatically configures the necessary settings that the local system needs to connect and download any required package from these repositories. But for this, you need to register the system to the Red Hat network and purchase an active RHEL subscription. If your system is registered with the Red Hat network and you have an active RHEL subscription, you do not need to do any additional configuration or setup to install our PM packages. Our HEL subscription is not free. To get it, you need to pay a subscription fee. If you want to use an RHEL system in the production environment, you should purchase it. A subscription not only allows you to download the latest and updated packages but also allows you to get technical support from Red Hat. Unlike our HEL subscription, our HEL Linux is free. Red Hat releases our HEL Linux under the GPL license. It means you can download and use it without purchasing a subscription. But it also means you will not get updates and support from Red Hat. That is fine if you want to use our HEL for testing or learning in the lab environment. While learning and testing, you need to install several packages and dependencies. If you do not have an RHEL subscription, you cannot use the default online repositories to download and install packages. But you can create and use a local repository to install packages and dependencies. To create a local repository, you can use the same installation disk you use to install the Linux. If you have an RHEL ISO image file, you can also use it to create a local repository. In this video, I will use a virtual machine to explain the process. Using virtual machines for testing and learning is the most convenient method. To learn how to install our HEL Linux on virtual machines and set up our HCE practice lab, you can check this video tutorial. No matter what your setup is, the process for creating and using a local repository is the same. If you are using a virtual machine and have an ISO image file stored on the host system, shut down the virtual machine and mount the RHEL ISO image file. We will copy all contents of the disk to the virtual machine. Make sure you have enough free disk space available on the virtual machine. If you have less disk space, create and add an additional hard disk to the virtual machine. Power on the virtual machine. If you are using the virtual machine and have the installation disk of our HEL, insert the disk into the optical drive of the host system and attach it to the virtual machine. If you are using a physical machine and have the installation disk, insert the disk into the optical drive. In all three cases, our HEL will automatically mount the disk to the slash run slash media slash username directory. To verify it, you can list the contents of this directory. Open a terminal. Use the ls command to list the contents of the disk. Starting from our HEL8, Red Hat packs packages in two separate directories, base OS and AppStream. The base OS directory contains all installation packages, administrative tools, and their dependencies. The AppStream directory contains all remaining packages, such as Bind, LibreOffice, MariaDB, etc. Create a directory under the root directory and check the available free space. In the first step, we need to copy all files from the installation disk to the Linux system. If you have more than 15 GB of disk space available, copy all files and directories from the installation disk to it. Depending on the hardware configuration, the copy process may take several minutes. Once it is done, you can use the ls command to verify it. As you can see here, all files and directories are copied. In the second step, we need to create a repository configuration file that uses this directory as the source directory for downloading and installing packages. Linux saves repository configuration files in the slash etc slash yum.repos.d slash directory. To create a local yum repository, we need to create a repository configuration file in this directory. Linux treats all files having the .repo extension as repository configuration files. Add a .repo extension to the file name. You can configure multiple repositories in a single file. To identify each repository, we assign a unique ID to it. We assign an ID in square brackets.
we can also assign a human readable name to each repository. The next setting we configure here is the metadata expiry. This setting controls how system should check this repository. This setting is used for online repositories where packages are updated frequently. You can use this setting to define the time interval in seconds between two consecutive checks. Since we are creating a local repository that will never update, we will configure a negative number here. The minus one indicates that its metadata will never expire. Linux checks only enabled repositories. To enable this repository, we will use the value 1 here. To disable this repository, we will use the value 0 here. The next setting controls the GPG signature check on packages downloaded from this repository. To disable it, use the value 0. To enable it, use the value 1. The next setting is the base URL. It is a URL to the directory where you store the packages of this repository. If you enable the GPG signature check, you must provide the location of the GPG key. Red Hat provides a GPG key with the installation disk. When you install Linux, the installation process installs this key in the slash etc slash pki slash rpm dash gpg slash directory. The name of the key file is rpm dash gpg dash key dash red hat dash release. Since we are using packages from the installation disk to build this repository, we can use this key to verify them. We have created a repository for BASOS packages. Now, we will create a repository for AppStream packages. For this, we will use the same settings. We will update the values of the ID, name, and base URL. I will add these settings in the description of this video. From there, you can copy or type these settings in your repo file. Save the file. Use the cat command to verify the settings. As we can see here, all settings have been successfully added to the file. To verify these settings, we use the yum repo list command. This command lists all configured repositories. Before we use these repositories, we have to create the repository data. A repository data is the index of all available packages on the repository. The yum command uses this data to search and download the latest packages. The create repo command creates this data. By default, this command is not installed. To install this command and other repo related utilities, we use this command. To confirm the installation, type Y and press Enter key. Confirm again. It will automatically resolve all dependencies and install all necessary packages. Once this command is installed, we can use it to create repository data. Specify the directory path where you copied all contents of the installation disk. This process takes several minutes. Just wait and let the process finish. 
This process generates many cache files. To clean them, we will use the yum clean all command. Now lists all repositories again. From the output, we can verify the configured repositories. To check the repository data of the local repository, we can list the directory that stores the repository data. Now this repository is ready to use. If we use the repository without registering the system with Red Hat, the yum command displays a message indicating that this system is not registered with Red Hat. We can disable this message by editing the subscription manager configuration file. Open this file. To disable it, change this value to 0. Save the file. Now it will not display the subscription message again. To verify it, list the repositories again. As you can see here, the subscription message has gone. To test repositories, let's perform some package management related tasks. This command lists all packages. To search all packages related to a specific keyword, you can use the search option. This option is helpful when you know the command or feature but don't know which package provides it. This command will list all packages that have the cman age keyword in their name and description. To install a package, we use the install option. If the package has any dependency, it automatically resolves and installs that. To remove a package, we use the remove option. It removes the specified package. By default, the yum command takes permission before performing each action. If you want to grant all permission or perform an unattended operation, you can use the Y option. If you use this option, the command will not ask for confirmation. To view information about a package, we use the info option. That's all for this video. In this video, we learned how to configure and use a local YUM repository. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback related to this video, please share them in the comment section.